T-72s weren't even close. Abrams is still on the front line in Ukraine. American Abrams tanks are still on the front lines in Ukraine, but tank battles in which they excel have been rare. Business Insider writes, citing a soldier from the 47th Separate Mechanized Brigade. It all depends on the situation. You see, we don't fight so that it's purely tank against tank, he said. According to the fighter, the T-72 didn't even stand next to the Abrams. He added that the situation on the battlefield has become very difficult due to Russia's advantage in manpower and equipment. That's why we have to adjust our actions. These tanks are designed primarily for direct contact. Go out and destroy enemy equipment, the military man said. Over the past few days, he said, his team has used its Abrams tanks to destroy Russian infantry and equipment. Tank operators highlighted several key features of the Abrams that give them an edge in combat. Among these are the tank's high-quality thermal imaging sites, which allow for superior target acquisition in various conditions. The tank's accuracy, maneuverability and stabilization systems also stand out, ensuring that despite its heavy weight, it remains highly effective in combat scenarios. The United States has delivered a battalion of 31 M1A1 Abrams tanks to the Ukrainian army. This delivery was part of a broader commitment by the US to support Ukraine in its defense against Russian aggression. The M1A1 Abrams, a main battle tank developed by the United States, represents a significant evolution in armored warfare with its introduction in the 1980s and continuous upgrades. Associated Press previously reported that Ukrainian troops began to withdraw American Abrams M1A1 tanks from the front line. The 92nd Brigade stated that the firepower and relevance of armored vehicles on the battlefield has decreased significantly due to the advent of unmanned systems. However, press officer of the 47th Separate Mechanized Brigade, Anastasia Blishchik, noted that Abrams tanks continue to operate in the Avdiivka direction and that the Ukrainian armed forces did not withdraw them from the front line. US has to be ready to send troops to Ukraine House Democratic Leader Hakeem Jeffries U.S. House Democratic Leader Hakeem Jeffries said the United States must continue supporting Ukraine to prevent a broader war. We can't let Ukraine fall because if it does, then there's a significant likelihood that America will have to get into the conflict, not simply with our money, but with our service women and our service men. Jeffries said in an interview with CBS. Jeffries explained that he believes Russian President Vladimir Putin seeks to recreate the Soviet Union and in doing so will threaten NATO allies. Putin's invasion of neighboring Georgia did not stop there. Jeffries pointed out, nor did his takeover of Crimea in eastern Ukraine. Are we to believe that in the face of this kind of consistent aggression, if we allow Vladimir Putin to succeed in Ukraine, he's only going to stop in Ukraine? Of course not, Jeffrey said. There is a growing pro-Putin faction in the Republican Party that does not want to support Ukraine and believes, for some reason, that Russia is not an enemy of the United States of America, Jeffries said. In his interview, Jeffries spoke about Ukrainian military's ability to hold off Russian forces for more than two years. This has been a strategic success by any definition, Jeffrey said. And so those that want to convince the American people that the Ukrainian effort has been a failure are promoting Vladimir Putin's propaganda because the facts say the exact opposite, which is why it's important for us to finish the job. It's a Churchill or Chamberlain moment. Last month, Congress approved a long-awaited bill to provide $61 billion in military and humanitarian aid for Ukraine. The first major aid package since December 2022, it came after months of fighting and deadlock in Congress, driven by Republicans who are divided over foreign aid to Ukraine. Oil and gas sector of Russia faces staffing issues due to mobilization. The Russian oil and gas industry is facing a shortage of labor due to the mobilization of soldiers for the war against Ukraine, reports Bloomberg. Recent reports from the Central Bank of Russia indicate that the labor shortage is currently affecting enterprises in all sectors of the economy. According to the material, the oil and gas sector of Russia lacks about 40,000 employees this year. The industry increased the number of online job postings in the first quarter by 24% compared to the previous year, seeking not only skilled personnel but also low-skilled workers. 
A representative of a Russian job search service informed the source that the labor shortage has affected even affluent sectors, referring to the oil and gas sector of the Russian Federation. He specified that companies offer high salaries to job seekers, but they compete with the state which attracts people to the military service. People are also lured by high salaries to defense plants of the Russian defense corporation Rostec, which raised wages by over 17%. Bloomberg reports that another consequence of Russia's aggression against Ukraine has been the restriction of foreign labor influx. International sanctions have weakened the ruble, boosted inflation and complicated international money transfers, making Russia less attractive for migrants from ex-Soviet countries, the material states. Last year, the official net inflow of foreign migrants to the country amounted to nearly 110,000 individuals, only a quarter of the 2021 level. Immediately following the invasion of Ukraine, the Russian oil and gas sector became a target of international sanctions aimed at reducing the Kremlin's revenues. However, the industry continues to operate, providing Russia with funds necessary to send soldiers to the front lines and purchase weaponry for shelling Ukrainian cities. The labor shortages raise questions about whether Russia's oil and gas industry can sustain this performance in the longer term, Bloomberg added. The Kremlin is constantly exploring new opportunities to recruit individuals to send to war against Ukraine. Despite Vladimir Putin's announcement of partial mobilization in September 2022 and his claim that it was supposedly concluded, many media outlets and Ukrainian intelligence report that this process continues covertly. Recently, President Volodymyr Zelensky announced that the Russian Federation plans to mobilize an additional 300,000 servicemen by June the 1st.